Hi, I hope your Shavuot was as meaningful and uplifting as mine. So Shabbat is just around the corner, and so is our weekly inspiration. Here's a challenge for you. I want to fill this room to its entirety, any room. I don't care how we fill it. I just need a substance that will fill a room to the max. You can suggest balloons. That would be awesome and fun. You can suggest bouncy balls that would really maximize every bit of space. The catch is that it has to be something that this room will actually contain. For example, water won't work. So think about it for a second. What do you think would fill a room to capacity? This challenge was allegedly carried out by some medieval king amongst his knights who promised that the winner would win the princess's hand in marriage. One brought straw, another brought dirt, and the last one came to the palace with nothing but a small candle in hand. He entered the room, lit the candle, and immediately every inch of space was filled to capacity. A clear winner. The challenge is for us to fill each inch of space we possess. And I don't mean with cotton candy. Let me explain what I mean. This week, all around the world, in synagogues and shuls, and even in Jewish homes, everywhere, we're going to be reading the Torah portion called Naso. It's got a fascinating story, and I want to share it with you. After our grand exodus from Egypt, and an even more grand debut of the Ten Commandments, the original top ten, at Mount Sinai, the time had come to make this relationship with God permanent, or at least temporarily permanent. This was going to manifest in what was called the Mishkan, or the Tabernacle. The Jewish people built this portable, magnificent structure with exact instructions from God. What was its purpose exactly? God directed the Jewish people to build the Mishkan in order that, as he said, I will dwell amongst them. Through the ark and the menorah and the special infinite that could be felt within this world, it was going to be pretty awesome. Now, they had completed building it, and the date for the grand opening was set, and the leaders of each of the 12 tribes planned a, a perfect housewarming gift together. With great excitement, they worked together and brought their gift to the newly built Mishkan, six wagons with 12 oxen to pull them. Why this number of wagons? Well, because the Mishkan was a traveling structure, and it would help the tribe of Levi carry all its parts as they journeyed through the desert to Israel. It seemed like the perfect gift, the perfect added touch. And yet, the number of vehicles doesn't add up. Six wagons? That's it? The Mishkan was a fabulous structure built with gold and gems and the finest woven tapestries that Jewish women had spun with incredible skill. Every detail was fabulous. And yet they only had six wagons and 12 oxen to carry it all. One answer given is that those six wagons were actually given by Moshe, by Moses, to the tribe of Levi. And when they loaded them with the beams and parts of the Mishkan structure, it all miraculously and perfectly fit. The beams fit perfectly onto the wagons when stacked to the max. So exactly perfect that one of the Levites would walk by the side of the wagon, ensuring that nothing fell. So why the seemingly unnecessary frugality? A few more wagons could have made it much more luxurious and no Levite would have to babysit this heavily loaded wagon. Spread the beams out, load things up with added space. No pressure. Why not? Why do you have to make a miracle that maybe wasn't even necessary? So what's the reason for these exact number of wagons? Some of the commentaries say that they weren't a gift. 
The Nesim, the leaders of each tribe, knew that the Mishkan was a traveling structure. How could it be a complete traveling structure with no wagons to carry it? And so their gift of wagons was not an added frill. It was part of the very structure of the Mishkan. If so, the wagons had to follow the same criteria that every other part of the Mishkan did. Their fullest potential had to be utilized. Yes, the Mishkan was magnificent and it fit for royalty. Yet at the same time, every detail was exact. No material was wasted. Nothing was built just because or carelessly. Every material was used to its fullest potential. And it was apparent just by marveling at the structure, how every object had extreme purpose and nothing was superfluous. If the wagons were part and parcel of the structure, they had to be the same. They were built with exact measurements so that the beams would fit perfectly. Each ox on its strength and ability would carry what it was fully capable of carrying. The message in all of this, all that God created in this world has a unique purpose. All that God created in this world has a unique potential and that potential must be utilized. I love this story because what it teaches us in this fast paced culture in which everything is disposable and upgradable is that everything that God created in this world has a purpose and a beauty, and nothing is superfluous. Every tree you encounter has immense value. Every bird, every drop of water, everything on this planet has value and has potential. Take the time, especially as it's getting nicer out, at least here in Montreal. Stop for a moment. Gaze at the world around you. And find that purpose. Find the godly spark within each thing. The value in every being. But more than that, today we have no Mishkan. Today we have no temple. No dwelling place for God. We're counting on a third one to be built very soon. So what's the replacement? How do we replace that temple experience? Each one of us. You have no Mishkan. God says, I will dwell amongst them. Inside each and every person. Inside each and every one of us. If that is so, and we're all mini Mishkans, then we need to act as such. You have inner strength. You have mind, power. You have talents. You have to use them. No, not just use them. They have to be used to the max, to their fullest potential. Have you tapped into the inner strengths you have? Have you truly used your inner strengths fully? You can do a mitzvah or you can live the mitzvah, joyously giving charity and giving all you can in time, in personal investment. You can learn a little Torah or you can tackle a difficult concept in Jewishness that you've already struggled with. Struggle with it. Struggle in your mind. Set your mind on a spiritual fire. Then you know that you're using your intellectual spark to the max. Or you can just go through college or university, get a degree, and then throw yourself into the experience and make every moment count and every encounter a lasting one. Like this one right now. So, Here's my final question. How are we going to fill this Shabbat with light? Well, that's up to you. If your neshama, that Jewish fire inside, decides to shine a little more light, then I think we've reached our full potential for this Shabbat. And our spiritual room is full. So l'chaim, my friends, let us all recognize that we are creations. Each one of us with a unique purpose and a brimming potential and l'chaim to using that potential to the very, very brim and filling our vessels, 
filling our rooms, our spiritual rooms, with as much light as we can. Shabbat Shalom. I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath. Have a great week.